Well, hello everyone. Thank you for being here today. This is Watercolor Workshop with Mega Mara. This is a program presented by Loudoun County Public Library. My name is Jeremy Worley, and I'm a library assistant in the programming department of LCPL, and your host today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to use the comment box below, and I will pass it along. Just a quick programming note, this was originally supposed to be painting the holiday wreath, but we had a late cancellation. Luckily, we're incredibly fortunate to get Mega Mira at the last moment to join us today. Mega is an award-winning artist specializing in still life and realistic watercolors. Today, she will guide us through the steps to paint a flamingo. Thanks for being here today, Mega. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for that uh, kind introduction. And hello, everyone. Uh, happy Tuesday. <laughs> Well, I know everybody is into a very, very Thanksgiving mode, food coma, decorations, families, and whatnot. And um, I wish you guys had painted the wreath, but um, hey, life happens. And today, why not play, paint this uh, flamingo? And as usual, very thankful for LCPL for always giving opportunities to artists like us uh, to share our skills and lovely patrons always joining us and appreciating art so today we're going to paint this flamingo we'll still keep up with the theme of a uh, fall with oranges and those same fall colors and um, i'll teach you how we can go step by step to paint this complex looking bird but believe me it's not going to be that complex we'll simplify it and we'll have lots of fun so just keep um your stuff ready, your paint ready, and you haven't already drawn it, I'll give you about five to eight minutes or 10 minutes to draw this. And then we'll get started on how we're going to approach this subject. Just remember, have fun. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll make the best of this Tuesday. Okay, so get started with the drawing. If you see, the drawing is very simple. I haven't really gone into the each feather here because we're going to paint that and just keep you know a bit of outline and that should be sufficient so get started everyone and if you have any questions put in the chat and i'll be happy to answer it we would we wouldn't need a lot of colors for this one very simple um uh, palette it's going to be mostly like yellows and oranges and some reds and um, some darks and I'll give you a little bit of liberty to go use your own darks to make it your own painting and uh, that way you know you have your own personal style um, because um, it's very important to choose your own colors everybody has different choices of colors we interpret differently so it's going to be simple I'll repeat the colors again but for now just keep your palette ready with mostly red, yellows, oranges, reds, and you know maybe some purples or blacks or blues, things like that. Don't worry about that. And we try to highlight as much as possible the feathers, the beautiful softness in the feathers. I'll teach you techniques. Um, just remember to have fun. We are in the holiday week and um, we just need to have fun uh, with with your paints and your colors. And uh, if you need the link to the reference photograph i think it's already on the lcpl website you can go and click the link um, that way you can just take a look at the photograph and also see the colors very vividly otherwise you can just paint along with me but it's always nice to have a reference picture in front of you close to you on the screen or on a, as a printout
and maybe some of you are painting in watercolors for the first time. Um, and it's okay if, um, you know, you don't have a lot of control on it uh, because watercolors is a different medium. You need to have a little bit of patience and understanding of a little bit of the timing and how wet your paper and your paint is. So if you think you're losing control today, it's okay. Sometimes watercolor takes us to this really um, undecided path that um, you discover. And then it just gives you this great feeling of how paint travels and what kind of feeling uh, you get out of it. So don't stress upon how perfect your drawing is. Don't stress upon how perfect your um, watercolors look or not look. Point is to just have fun and paint and um, discover something new. Okay, in about five minutes, we'll start painting. So hopefully some of you have already done the drawing. Okay, about two more minutes and then we get started. Flamingos are such vibrant uh, birds. They just, I mean, the feathers are just so beautiful that I think as a realistic artist, I just want to paint every single feather um, with every detail. But obviously we cannot do that in uh, such, a, such a short span of time today. It would take, I think, forever. But uh, we'll try to make it look um, as realistic as possible. Um, with some abstract feel because of uh, the time. But yes, if you really spend time on a subject like this, it would just absolutely blow your mind like how beautiful watercolors can make uh, these feathers look so real. Okay, just a minute and we are set.
Okay, so we can get started. Uh, let me just discuss the palette first. And you can see my palette is really messy, but hey, I paint a lot, so it's going to be messy. But I'm going to just use very simple colors. Um, if you see, uh, there's a bit of yellow and uh, orange. So I'm going to do some orange. There's some tones of reds, and I'm going to use some kind of a scarlet red. And um, yeah, orange is here. And this, you can see, is really black. Now, it's up to you if you want to use black. I'm going to use like a very nice dark purple. Um, just to give some color instead of keeping very black and boring. So I'm going to use that. So I don't have, I have purple here, like a really nice dark purple. But otherwise, you know, you can choose your dark colors. You can make it blue, you can make it brown, you can make it black. Definitely go in and make it your own painting. Okay. And how would you uh, approach a subject like this? It can be so complicated, overwhelming, where to start and what feather should I start so instead of taking this as a feather feathery bird we will think them in the form of uh, values when what are values values are basically lightness or darkness of something in this it's let's take his color now if you see the colored picture in the black and white it's hard to really make out sometimes how dark or light this orange is or red is but if you see a black and white picture, you can see the stark difference. Look, these are some white areas, the you know, very low values. And it gets darker and it gets so dark. And you can see that this is really dark. I think the beak here or this shape is really the darkest. So when you keep a black and white picture close to you, you get an idea of how much paint or how much water to actually load up your brush with. Otherwise, what happens is sometimes we just make puddles out of it. And then we struggle and get frustrated of how everything is going haywire and then uh, watercolor suddenly becomes too boring and challenging. So I'm going to keep this black and white picture close to me so that I know how much color to add, okay? And how will we start the painting? Should I start with the background? Should I start with this area, this area? It doesn't matter. You can start from wherever you like. As long as you break this whole painting into small chunks. Now, what I'm going to do is to start, maybe I'll start this area as one shape and paint it in one sitting. That way I have solved this area. Then maybe I can solve this area. Maybe break down this into two areas. Same here, you know, we can split this area into small parts so that we're not overwhelmed and this itself can be another whole area so just chunk it into small areas and that way you know you don't have to really speed up with your painting and struggle that everything is drying out so that's what we're going to do i'm going to start with this area and i'll also show you how i'm going to paint i'm going to paint this in a technique called wet on wet. Now what is wet on wet? This paper is dry, but if I put some water and pick some wet paint, then this becomes wet on wet technique. Okay. And why do I use this? Because I want some colors to really intermingle with each other. So that way I can really mix those colors on the paper. And also, this gives a very soft, feathery feel. So this is why I'm going to use wet on wet. And if I say this paper is dry, and I just pick some paint and paint this, this will be wet on dry because the paper was dry. So for now, just remember these two techniques, what we're going to use. Because the subject is very soft, I'm preferring to use wet on wet technique. Now, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my colors ready. I have my yellow, my orange. When I say ready, maybe you can take it out of your tube and put it into a palette. Or maybe you can, you know, if you already have a palette set, just spray some water and just uh, keep it ready. Just keep it moist so that, you know, you can quickly uh, load your brush with it and start applying the paint. So I'm going to 
tackle this area with some water first just plain water i will not do uh sorry i will not come down too much keep it just a little above this drawing that i did and bring it down just wetting my area small section with nice clean water sometimes you'll realize that the water has dried very quickly by the time you came to the uh, other portion and that's okay you just have to go back and apply some more water it also depends how thick your brush is how much water you're picking so many factors and even the humidity in the room if it's way too hot your paper will start drying very very quickly so i finished this part and i'm going to take some yellow let me try to keep it close if you can see something And remember, I'm not going to exactly copy everything from the drawing uh, or the photograph uh, because we don't want to be slaves of photographs I and mean, it's just to interpret it. And yes, of course, there are different kinds of painting like hyper-realistic paintings where they really, really, really copy every single inch and corner and pixel of the photograph. Um, I'm not that kind of painter. I do like realism but i cannot really copy a photograph now while this is wet i will take my beautiful orange and go in some areas because this is already wet it's important that we take advantage of some orange maybe a little bit of red actually you can do that because see as you come down you can see that the colors vary a lot Now, why am I doing this part quickly? Because it's wet. So what happens is your paper or your subject has a medium now, water. And I'm taking advantage of that medium so that I can put my colors quickly. And this way, I'll have more control and softness over it. I'm just making a few tiny dots here. Just to give that bird like texture. And remember, this red paint, what I'm taking is going to be really thick. When I say thick paint, it means less water and more paint. I think I'm going to stop here so that you guys can catch up and also let this part dry. And then we move on to the other area. Okay, so by tackling small areas, I'm not overwhelmed. I can plan and I can take my time and not worry about the other areas immediately. Okay. So we finished one part here. And slowly we'll go to the other ones. Okay, but I'll give you guys two minutes to catch up. 
I think I got a little extra paint in this eye area. So I'm just going to remove it. And I'm just taking a clean white brush to remove some of the paint. Okay. I do have a lot of other red and pinks here. And because this is wet, I can take advantage and add some darks here. But if yours is dry already, then leave it. We'll come back to it. I'll show you how we can add. Okay. All right. Let's go to another area. And this time, I'm just going to take some orange paint. And I'm going to tackle this area. And see, I keep calling this as area or a section or a shape. The reason being, <laughs> it's really hard to sometimes define what this is. It, it's, yes, it's a part of the beak, but what part of the beak? So it's better you call it a shape. And take a bit of red and add it. Next, we can move on to some more small areas like this. And it's almost like a very reddish orange. So remember, colors really don't matter with a subject like this. When, when I mean it doesn't matter, like I said, it doesn't have to exactly match. What's important is values, how dark or how light you go to make it look real. And it's also very important that you let the other areas dry because if I just start putting wet paint next to each other, they'll just form puddles with each other and just ruin the space around it. So it's very important that I leave some certain edges here to dry. Okay, next, we can actually tackle this area. And for this, I'm going to use a nice red. It's called Scarlet Red, Deep Scarlet. It's kind of a very deep red. And again, I'm going to use wet on wet because I want it soft. And then I'm going to add some oranges and some dark reds. We'll mix with some browns with it, okay? I'll give you guys a minute to catch up and then I'll add that layer. So just keep some browns and some maroons or any dark colors ready because this area is dark, but underneath is really light. So we'll do that. Okay. I'm just going to wet this area again. Again, I'm just breaking down to small areas. I'm not going completely down with the feathers. 
are the shapes you can see. And let's just go in those. Just see, I'm really not doing much. But as soon as I touch the brush on the sweat area, the color starts to just explode on the surface. And sometimes that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. So in these areas where you want this color to just move around, the wet on wet technique is really good. While it's wet, I can take some orange, play around. And you can see this paint is quite thick. This is very important because if it's too watery, it'll just flood in this area and not give any shape. But I want it to really stick on the paper. I just keep adding some reds and some dark browns for it to really look nice and dark. If you think it's not looking dark, that means either you have too much water on your paint or if you're not or you're not taking enough paint. It has to be really thick and dark. So that's how you test that hey it's not enough. And give you guys a minute to catch up and then we'll move on with the other two sections. Let's tackle this section. Again, I see some really grayish kind of colors here. Maybe we can add a bit of tinge of purple, but I'm still going to use first the scarlet deep red, then add some layers of yellows and oranges and reds to make this look vibrant. Okay. So once again, oops, I don't think I need to paint the whole part, we're going to leave some white areas here. Very important. When I say white areas, you don't put any paint on it. You just leave it as it is. That's how, how we paint white and watercolors. You leave it as it is, and that becomes your white paint. I'll take my deep scarlet. Okay. 
take a tinge of purple here. I want to add some gray areas here, but instead of using black, I want to use purple or some blue or things like thing, colors like that. Again, while it's still wet, I'll pick my yellows and just in some areas, not all. I want to keep some areas empty, right? I'm going to just keep this yellow area here very clean while it's wet. Yeah, oranges. And I'm continuing to add those oranges with some strokes like feathers so that they look like feathers. And as I come down, I see more of reds, right? You want to keep those end edges a little more darker. So this has to be a bit of planning. When you do that, when you have your paints ready, all you got to do is pick them up and just start putting it on your palette. But if you're not ready, like still uh, waiting for it to come out of the tube or something like that, then what happens is you lose that opportunity to make it look soft. So make sure your paints are all there. Even if you're not using them right away, just keep it ready. Why again, this is really wet. I can take some liberty here. Use some of the really dark reds mixed with some purple maybe, or blue, and really bring out some dark layers here. We want it to really pop out some areas. And that sometimes will not be through the reds that exist as it is. So we just add some colors, mix it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think at this point, I'm going to stop here so that it all dries and I can go move to another area. So I'll give you guys two minutes, three minutes to catch up.
Okay, let's move on to the other areas. Okay, I think before I do this area, let's do this part, this shape, the big shape here. And again, like I said, I'm going to take a really dark purple, maybe mixed with something. Let's see what I have on the palette. I have so many colors here that I'd rather use them. Maybe blue. I think I'll keep it to purple. Don't think I have anything else here. Yeah. But I like this. So I think I'll stick to it. But it has to be really dark. Okay. Less water and more paint. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm not going to wet this area because I want a really sharp, like nice sharp line, not a soft line. And slowly, just around that shape. Okay, so you can see how dark this is. It has to be really dark. And then I'll show you how the contrast would look when you put paint next to it. Okay. Excuse me. And again, while we are here, I, I do have so much different kinds of paints here. I can also go ahead and add some other areas here. Even here, I can add some dark, Oops, need some water. I can go ahead and add really dark paint. And bring this all into like popping out and like almost like into action, you can say. Continuing, you can keep continuing, add some of these layers here. And yeah, I'll just continue this, adding colors, bringing down. So this now has almost got like a definition of shape. Okay, so this will help you guide now where should you go next. So I'll give you guys a minute or two to catch up and then you're not left with that much. And then I'll show you a few more techniques how to make it look darker. But continue with this and we're almost there.
Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's tackle this area now. And here you can see uh, some part of it is already empty, so we're not going to paint. And this is again, we'll do with oranges, reds, and really dark reds. Okay, so again, I'm not going to wet here this area. I'll take some orange, maybe some yellow as well. Keeping it a little loose, you know, freehand. Take some red here. Be careful if that purple area around you is still wet. If it's wet, then you got to wait a little bit. Right? I think mine looks quite dry, so I'm okay. I'll take some nice dark reds mixed with some brown and try to get this really beautiful strokes here. Okay, this has to be dark. Otherwise, what's going to happen is these two areas will not look very cohesive we want it to look like okay they're all uh, like transitioning okay not much left not much left then after this i'll tell you what we can do you want to add some more red or something to it, go ahead. Just sometimes what happens in watercolors, well, most of the time I would say, the colors start to look a little dull. So once it dries, you actually have to go in and add some colors. Okay, because watercolors dry a little lighter. And you'd have to sometimes go and fix it. Just add more. And it's always a better idea to add than to remove because uh, removing colors in watercolor in while painting in watercolors could be a bit messy. So it's always nice to go slow and add some more later. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm just tweaking these areas. I kind of feel that. It's a little more red, a little more orange, or things like that to darken it. Okay. Then I'm going to take this bit of a deep scarlet again here. And this is going to be a little lighter. All these areas.
just tweaking in some areas. Okay, now you'll see that these two areas look very similar. I'll tell you why. Because this area is supposed to be a bit darker and I'll show you how to add darks to it now. But before that, again, I'm going to take a very light orange or kind of yellow mix to it very lightly and just brush here a little bit. And maybe with a very tiny brush, I'm just going to pick some really dark purple or black or whatever dark you have used. And just outline this eye. And with the same dark, I'm just going to add these areas here. Okay, and almost towards the end of the painting, I'll show you how to add a little more darks, and then we're almost done. So what I'm going to do now is to fix this area and here a little bit. I'll show you here. I'm just going to take a really dark mixture of this red. Maybe add a bit of purple or a blue to it. If you want to make it really dark, you need to really add something to it. Okay. And I'm going to take that really thick. And just on the upper side, in the form of this shape, add some of that paint that I just mixed. Because those areas need to be differentiated. Otherwise, they'll not look three dimensional. And the really darker you make it, the really it'll really pop out. We'll go down and do the same thing. Make it nice and dark. Make it really look differentiate between the shapes. Okay. 
and see if you need to add any more places, some dark areas. Yes, now you can see that how effectively those shapes are popping out once we added those darks. When we did not, they just look very flat and the subject was not really coming out. But now you see that, you know, maybe once this dries, I may add some more layers or some oranges or reds. But for now, it looks fine and you can see some differentiation of layers. Again, you can... Keep going, keep adding. There's some layers here on the sides. Okay. But these white spaces, these really make the painting really look um, balanced, actually, because you need some white space to balance the painting. Otherwise, everything looks very cluttered. So it's very important that, you know, you have some resting space for your eye whenever you make a painting. And that kind of observation comes with a lot of practice. Maybe when you paint, you probably want to fill in every single layer <laughs> on the paper. But it takes a little bit of observation, time, and practice. So definitely, if you like watercolors, if you want to learn more, get better at it, the only way is to paint every day. There is no shortcut. You learn, you paint, you practice, you fail, and you get better. So. That's the only way. That's how I have learned and I've come a long way. So I hope uh, you really enjoyed this class. Uh, and hopefully we can paint many more of such subjects. And if you have any favorite subjects, please let us know. We'll definitely try to fit in whatever you want to do. Nature, landscape, snow scene, whatever, or animals, anything. But that's it from me today. And keep painting guys awesome thank you so much mega that was it's it's cool to see it like you know start at the beginning and end up as like that it's mm -hmm. really cool to see the process yeah thank you so, yeah thank you very much and thank you to everyone who attended today i hope everyone has a, a nice safe peaceful holiday and uh like i said keep the calendar we got a lot of programs coming up so definitely keep an eye on it and thanks again to everyone for being here today we appreciate it